Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, everyone, for joining us for the uh, Upper Darby Committee meeting, January 13th, 2021. At this point in time, can we stand for Pledge of Allegiance? And then we will also follow it with a moment of silence for those lost on January 6th at the Capitol. Okay. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, 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 States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation, under God, God, indivisible, God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, 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 justice, justice, justice for all. For all. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Boy. Okay, so if, uh, I'd like to officially open the meeting. And at this point in time, could uh, Councilwoman Billups give us a roll call? Of yes. Attendance? Thank you, Council President Wentz. Um, Councilor Tunis? Happy New Year, Upper Darby. Councillor Billups is here. Councillor Silver? Silver. Here. Councillor Blackwell? Present. Councillor Gwynn? Present. Councillor Burke? Here. Councillor Sadiq? Yes. Councillor Feralia? Here. Councillor Barnett? Here. Councillor Wagner? Here. And Council President Wentz. Here. Thank you. All present and accounted for. Awesome. Great. So next up, we have rules of meeting decorum. Upper Darby Township Council and residents will maintain professional respect for each other. Council encourages free speech. However, civility is required, which would prohibit threats, profanity, scandalous, impertinent, and redundant comment or any comment the discernible purpose of which is to disrupt or prevent the conduct of the business of the meeting at this point uh, at this point in time uh, could we get a motion to approve the minutes uh, for the committee meeting 12 to 2020 so moved uh, second so uh, blackwell And Phillips. Um, so just wanted to let, let you know that I did um, communicate with uh, Alexis in reference to some sm minor corrections um, in, in reference to it. Uh, so, and that was after I didn't get a chance to look at the minutes until today. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that there were some minor corrections made to the minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. We cool with that. Cool. So, um, all those in favor of approving the twelve, sorry, December second, twenty twenty minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Say your name. Uh, abstains. Okay. Eyes have it. Thank you. Uh, next up, can we get a motion to approve the special meeting? Uh, minutes for 12-24-2020. So moved. When? Okay. Oops. Great. Um, any questions or concerns? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the 12-24 special meeting minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say your name. Ayes have it. Thank you. Great. So moving on, we have public forum next. So if Ms. Dobbins can come back and um, give us a um, start us with the public forum. Uh, if everyone can turn off your microphones, um, uh, except for Councilwoman Billups and I, we will be doing the timer situation. Uh, I do the three minutes. Okay, so Ms. Dobbins, 
Public forum. This message is from Sparrow Pappas. I live at 2423 Cedar Lane, Drexel Hill, PA. I called Public Works earlier and I was just informed that recycling costs have nearly tripled. I understand that recycling makes you feel good about the fact that you're doing something about the environment. But if recycling costs have nearly tripled, does it really pay to recycle? I would like to know the answer. I feel if we don't recycle, we could save the taxpayers some money. Thank you and have a nice day. That concludes the public comment for this evening. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, I know recycling is part of the conversation, um, but okay. Yeah, there'll be a lot more information on recycling later in the meeting. So I think uh, yeah. it's a good question and, and it'll come up later in the meeting and be answered. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's what I thought. So just great. Wonderful. So uh, next up, we have the Honorable Mayor Barbara Ann Keffer. Take it away, Mayor. Um, oh, wait, I'm muted. I'm muted. No, you're good. We can hear you. You good. Oh, great. Okay. You can hear me mumble. Uh -huh. um, well, good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year. I have um, some great news to share tonight. Very recently, we received notice that the township has been awarded $1 million from the state through its redevelopment assistance capital program, also known as RACP, to develop a brand new community center at 7000 Walnut Street. In the near future, we will be holding public meetings to get resident input about future community program at the site as the design and engineering plans evolve. I would like to thank State Representatives Margaret Davidson and Mike Zabel, as well as State Senator Tim Carney for their support for this project. We also received notification that the, the DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, has awarded us over $340,000 through their 902 recycling grant program. The funds will be used to purchase a leaf vacuum truck, which will greatly enhance our leaf waste collections next fall. And I'd like to go into some details um, about our residential recycling program. Um, and first to address the, the residents uh, comment about recycling, tripling the, um, the costs are related to clean recycling versus contaminated recycling. And we have an unfunded state mandate to have a recycling program through Act 101. And due to a legacy contract, we taxpayers pay $150 a ton for contaminated recycling and $90 a ton for regular recycling. And according to waste management, our recycling handler, 90% of the contamination of uh, our recycling is caused by plastic bags. So I'm asking everyone to please place your recyclables loosely into a recycling container. Please do not recycle pizza boxes. Recyclables in plastic bags and pizza boxes will be treated like regular trash. If you need a recycling container, please call or email the, the mayor's request line at 610-734-7625 or request at upperdarby.org. So working together as a township, staff and residents, we can bring down recycling costs and create the ability to spend our tax dollars on other and possibly new municipal services or programs. On my part, I will do a better job more consistently on community outreach, especially when it comes to changes that we make and how things have been done. Thank you for sticking with this tough transition, which is a process and it is already showing improvement. The amount of contaminated recycling is markedly down this week compared with last week. Please look for updates on the official uh, Township web, what, uh, the, the official Township Facebook page, Upper Darby Township hyphen government, and on our website, upperdarby.org. A newsletter with more details on the recycling program and the trash and recycling schedule and other Township issues should be in your mailboxes by the end of the month. We have three openings for positions on the Industrial Development Authority. The authority is organized for the purpose of encouraging economic growth and development within Upper Darby. And the authority serves as a conduit issuer for the financing of projects for manufacturing firms, 
501c3 organizations, including educational institutions and healthcare organizations, and also exempt facilities such as water and, and power utilities and pollution control facilities. Financing is provided through third party sources such as private sector financing institutions and bond sales with below market interest rates payable by borrowers on loans that are tax exempt to the lender. The board of the Industrial Development Authority consists of five members appointed to five year terms by the mayor. Members should be knowledgeable in finance, economic development, or the planning and financing of large capital improvements. If you're interested in being a member of the Industrial Development Authority, please email a resume and a letter of interest to mayor at upperdarby.org by January 31st. This Monday, January 18th, is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It is a national holiday as well as a township holiday. Trash and Recycling Collections will operate next week on a holiday schedule. Details on collections are on the township calendar and on the township website. It's disappointing that the COVID-19 pandemic prevents us from gathering for the many Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebrations and service projects our community usually holds. On Monday, you will be able to view a message from the township in celebration of the life and work of Dr. King. We will also be sharing the 1967 interview Dr. King did on the Michael Douglas Show on our website and our Facebook page. It's still relevant today in many, many ways as it was then. So that's it for my message. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Mayor Kepper. Um, so next up is actually myself for our present report. I just uh, wanted to um, uh, Sorry, I drew a blank. Um, I just wanted to point out, uh, we did make some changes to our, uh, to leadership for a couple of our committees. Uh, I'd like to thank those who um, were leaders that got shifted a little bit for all their hard work and congrats to those who stepped up uh, on those committees. Um, and I, um, uh, I know that uh, anything that the township shares on their Facebook page in reference to MLK Day, we will also share on the council's uh, township Facebook page. Uh, and also, I know there are some events happening around the township, uh, virtual events. Uh, Representative Davidson has one. Uh, and then I believe there's at least um, an event that's in person at St. Dots. Just hope that anyone who does attend an event that you maintain social distancing and wears a mask um, so that we can keep uh, fighting co the spread of COVID. Um, and then I just, uh, yeah, I think, I'm sorry, that's about it. Not, well, sorry for not being as organized for tonight. Uh, so at this point in time, we're gonna move forward to committee's reports, finance committee, fi finance and appropriations committee, co-chairs Gwyn and Silva, members Blackwell and Burke. We do have a public hearing this evening for ordinance 3088. Could Solicitor Richardson give us a brief on this ordinance? I am muted. Thank you. Good, good evening, uh, President Woods. I appreciate it. This is a ordinance of Upper Darby Township, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, appointing Michelle R. Portnoff as solicitor for the limited purpose of collecting unpaid municipal claims for delinquent accounts and approving collection procedures, interest assessment, credit card and debit card charges, and fees and costs to be added to the amount collected, repealing all inconsistent ordinances are parts thereof, providing a severability clause and effective date. Uh, whereas to be fair to all property owners and other residents of Upper Darby Township, it is necessary for the township to recover promptly unpaid delinquent abatement of nuisance accounts, unpaid claims if necessary by legal proceedings. Whereas the Municipal Claims and, claims and Tax Liens Act um, as amended authorizes the addition of attorney's fees, charges, costs, costs, excuse me, expense, commissions, and fees to the total payable 
with respect to unpaid claims, but only if the municipality involved has approved by ordinance a schedule of such fees. And whereas the township has determined that it is in the best interest of all property owners and other residents to have vigorous enforcement of all unpaid claims and unpaid charges, utilizing the procedures set forth in the act, except in cases of serious hardship, which the township will address on a case-by-case -case basis pursuant to uniform policies. And whereas the township has reviewed the subject of interest and attorney's fees for collection matters and has determined that the fees set forth in this ordinance are reasonable in amount for the services here and described. Now, therefore, it is hereby ordained and enacted by township council as follows, fees to be added to unpaid claims, costs to be added to unpaid Unclaimed, unpaid claims, credit card and debit card charges, interest, collection procedures, uh, related actions, the appointment of the solicitor, uh, the repealer, severability, and the effective date. So when's the reading? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, so at this point in time, uh, Ms. Dobbins, can you come back on uh, for public comment? So at this point in time, I'd like to open the public hearing on Ordinance 3088. No public comment was received on Ordinance 3088. Okay, so hearing no public comment, uh, then the public hearing is now closed. Uh, at this point in time, can we get a motion to approve Ordinance number 3088? Councilman Gwynn and a second. So Councilman Sadiq. Gwynn Sadiq. Are there any questions or concerns on this ordinance? Okay, seeing none. Uh, council members, turn on your microphones. Uh, all those in favor of passing Six. ordinance num number so, three. Uh, roll call, please. Roll oh, call. Good point. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Billups, roll call vote. Yes, I take her out. Um, Councilor Tunis? Yes. Councilor Billups is a yes. Councilor Silva? Yes. Councilor Blackwell? Yes. Councilor Gwynn? Yes. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Sadiq? Yes. Councilor Feralia? Yes. Councilor Barnett? Yes. Councilor Wagner? Yes. And Council President Wentz? Yes. Great. Thank you all. Um, great. So next up, um, we also have a resolution, uh, uh, resolution number 0121. Uh, Solicitor Kilkenny, do you want to give us a reading on this resolution? Okay, let me unmute myself. Sounds good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Uh, well, here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, the tr and and this is the uh, Tran final. I, I believe Mr. Scott was going to be talking on this, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Pat? Uh, yes, I'm here and able to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, so he's going to give a description of it and and can do a reading if you like, uh, Council President Wentz. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Mr. Scott, take it away. Sure. Thank you, uh, President uh, Lentz. Uh, with me, I also have um, Tim Kerr and Ben Ganter from PNC Bank, who would be um, purchasing the note. But I'll read the summary and I'll give a brief description of it. Great. Thank so you. Upper Darby Township. You're welcome. This is a resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of a tax and revenue anticipation note of the township in the fiscal year ending December 31, 2021 determining the principal amount of the note and the form and the terms of the note, authorizing the award of the note and making certain other determinations in connection therewith. Um, the township at the end of uh, last year determined that it would be helpful to issue a tax anticipation note uh, to help a cash flow, potential cash flow shortage in the first couple months of the year. And we solicited a proposal from PNC Bank as current underwriter to the township for the note, um, that this would be a note that is issued for 
uh, $5 million to um, help alleviate cash flow burdens um, in anticipation of the collection of revenue. Uh, the, the note is limited to a maximum amount of 85% of the anticipated revenue. We're not coming anywhere near that. There's a certification on the resolution that there's approximately $50 million of anticipated revenue through the end of April, 2021. This note is in the amount of 5 million. It would be due and payable on April 30, 2021 and carries an interest rate of 1%. Um, so the resolution uh, authorizes the township to accept the proposal from PNC Bank for the issue for the purchase of the note, and um, authorizes the filing of proceedings with DCED. This note can be approved on resolution that does not require an ordinance, uh, and it also also authorizes or directs, of course, the township to repay the note on its terms uh, and grants a, a pledge and security interest in the anticipated tax revenue and other revenue to be received through April 30, uh, 2021. Uh, so that's, that's really the sum and substance of it. Uh, Mr. Rangione, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to my summary. Uh, no, I think that was a, a very good explanation, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Great, and like I said, we also have PNC Bank um, represented by Tim and Ben, if anybody has any questions on the, the structure of the note or the, the need for it. Okay, great. Uh, at this point in time, uh, are there any questions or concerns from Council on this resolution? I see Councilman Glynn. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, I just want to point out that the draft, the copies that we had of the note uh, had it as blank spaces for the interest rate. I just am confirming based upon what you just said that the amount is 1%. That appears on page three of the note and then again in section B, which is I believe B1, it should also read 1%. That is correct. And actually this morning, yes, Mr. Wood, we received the signed uh, proposal from PNC Bank that had the 1% filled in on B1 and we completed the uh, section six and circulated that to um, the municipal clerk this morning. So that will be filled in in the final resolution at 1%. Thank yeah, it, it got emailed to everyone, but it may not have gotten into the, the packets that were already prepped for council. So that's the difference, but it should be in your email. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other questions from council on this resolution? <clears throat> It is a resolution we are going to pass tonight so that um, because they need the paperwork ASAP uh, to make it happen. So I just want to make sure that everyone is. Go ahead, Councilman Gwynn. I'd like to make a motion that we approve it. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure we had our normal committee discussion a little bit before we did the thing, but we can, we can move forward to a motion to approve. Um, uh, and so do we have a second? Second. Okay. So, uh, Glenn and Blackwell. Are there any questions or concerns on this resolution? Uh, yes, Council President. I, I, Councilman Silva? Yes. So, the loan itself is due on the 30th of April, and at that time, it, 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 it has accrued its full interest of 1%. It, I, I just want to be, it's not like an APR or an APY, it's it's 1% as of April 30th. That's correct. Absolutely. And if there, correct. if there's any extension that, beyond April 30th, is, 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 is there an additional accruement that could possibly happen? Well, under the, the note matures on April 30th, so it would all be due and payable in full at that time. Technically speaking, if it's not paid at that time, it would default, in which case the interest rate would be increased. I think it's by 3% over the current rate. So, you know, there is, yeah, there is an accruing of interest after April 30. I would not anticipate um, that happening, but, you know, and I, I suppose in the worst case, we could approach PNC Bank and ask, ask for an extension, but um, interest would continue to accrue, accrue until the time that the note is paid in full. Okay. 
Okay. And is 1% an annual rate or a, a monthly rate? It's an annualized rate of interest. So it would be 1% on the 5 million for the five, for the four months that it's accruing. Okay. Okay, just wanted to check. Okay. Um, cool. Um, any other questions or concerns on this resolution? All right, seeing none. All those in favor of passing resolution 0121, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say your name. Eyes have it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Scott, could you send us your notes that you were reading off of your summary? Can you send that to us so that we have it documented properly for our minutes for this meeting? Yeah, I was just, well, I was just kind of winging, I was just kind of summarizing it from, the, from right. my knowledge of the resolution. Um, okay. But I could certainly, why don't Write I prepare a one page summary for you? That would be awesome. That would be really amazing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you That's very great. much. Okay, thank you. And thank you all for all your work with this. Uh, we've been getting your emails. We greatly appreciate all your work um, uh, with helping us with the TRAN. Um, yeah. Thanks so. very much. And appreciate I know your it. team extends beyond those that are here tonight. Uh, so just appreciate everyone's hard work overall. It's a pleasure. Thank great. you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Have a great night. Have a good evening, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. All right. Okay, great. So, uh, at, so at this point in time, Councilman Quinn, would you like to continue on with your committee report? I believe that that's it. Do you want to make sure anyone else doesn't have any financial anybody things? Have, does Go anybody ahead. else have anything for council? Anybody on the committee? Anybody in council? Yeah, Bob, I, I do actually. Hi, yeah, um, I'd, I'd like to see if there's perhaps a way that we could um, possibly uh, pay or set it up so residents could pay their uh, trash and sewer fees online. It seems like some things are you're able to pay online, but that's that's not one of them. Wonder if uh, maybe we could meet and discuss probably trying to do that because I think that would be a big benefit for people. <laughs> The um, administration has to uh, okay that. Uh, CAO wants to weigh in on this. <laughs> oh sure. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt the council discussion, but I can, you know, provide some update from the administration perspective. Um, <clears throat> so last year, when the pandemic started, <clears throat> we moved very quickly to move uh, a number of services and fees online: uh, parking tickets, permit application fees those kind of things. And so we were able to get those things online very quickly in the spring. And we've been working to improve those systems, um, make sure that we're accounting for the money properly on the back end and it's getting to the right departments and uh, the right accounts and so on. The, the taxes and the trash and sewer fees are, are both a little bit more sensitive and a little bit more complicated. And so that's why they haven't yet been folded into that program. Uh, I think it, it is something that, that the administration absolutely agrees with you, Councilman Silva. We, we do want our residents <clears throat> to be able to pay those things online. I, I don't, I don't want to promise that they'll be able to do it in 2021, uh, but I certainly think that by 2022, when we have uh, a new website and new municipal management software, uh, that we would, we would definitely be able to do it by then. Um, you know, we're always open to input. Uh, you know, tax bills are, <clears throat> excuse me, about to be sent out in the next week or so. So uh, we would need that system to be sort of up and running and a live link to be able to print on the bills. So again, it's it's probably not feasible for 2021, but it absolutely is a an active goal of the administration for sure. Okay, super, thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, Councilman Burke. Thanks, President Wentz. Um, question to, to you, Vince. Uh, is this a good time to talk about the capital budget for this year under finance? Um, I, that's probably more a question for the chair of the committee or the president of council. 
uh, I'm kind of, uh, you know, if, if they tell me to answer, I'll answer. <laughs> What's your question? What's the question? Yeah. Uh, just, just the actual spending of some, uh, you know, that we budgeted for this year. Uh, some things take six months to a year to order, um, you know, the process. Uh, and if we don't spend the money in 2021 of that 10 million, where does that money go? Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the way the, the sort of tax certificates operate on the capital budget, you actually have a three-year window where you are uh, required to spend 85% of the proceeds in the first three years. So there's no uh, penalty or detriment for not spending it in the first year. Uh, and we certainly understand that, that certain larger purchases, <clears throat> as you say, you order it, they don't come in six, seven, eight, nine months. Um, so we wouldn't... Uh, we wouldn't necessarily run into any problem or, or penalty there. And in fact, in some ways, because the mayor, um, the, the mayor created uh, the, the OPEB fund as right. the interest accrues, it will actually help us. Now, we also strongly believe in the capital improvement budget. So we are going to try to spend the money and make those capital improvements. Um, but there's no, there's no penalty in that first year if the check doesn't go out before December 31st. Yeah, the, the question I was looking, the answer I was looking for was the interest that we don't use. Not, not that there's a penalty. Um, that, right. that Would that interest on that loan, uh, on, mm -hmm. on the interest on that, would that go into the OPEC or will we just wait and you already said we're going to use it over the two or three years if it didn't come in in the first six or eight months? Yeah, so I think in the past that interest has sort of just been folded into the capital program. But of course that interest is unbudgeted for in the capital improvement budget. And that's why, you know, the mayor's commitment to pay down those long-term obligations, uh, we created that fund. And it's, uh, I think it's a very strategic and good use of that interest uh, to, to do it that way. So that's where that interest would go going forward. Thanks for the answer. If sure. I can also add yes, one other thing associated with what you uh, had asked, Brian. Uh, the administration, when they have their commitments, they can make uh, a com commitment to purchase an item and it would be paid for at a later date. It's incumbent, those funds get encumbered and restricted to that item. So uh, it's paid this year or next, it's still committed based yes, on the correct. incumbents. Yes, yes, correct. Anybody Great. else have a question? Um, I do actually. Um, I was just curious of where we were on um, as far as the county, if we got any new assessments or uh, what our tax or millage we were looking at. Uh, we talked about it a lot last month. I was just wondering where we were with that. Yeah, sure. So we actually, we had some really good uh, exchanges uh, with the county assessment office. Um, <clears throat> they're sort of... Uh, well, really, most, mostly good news. Uh, our, our finance staff was able to analyze our, our file and the county's file and um, <clears throat> were able to get down to about 40 or 50 properties where there were discrepancies between our file and their file, um, properties listed as tax exempt in Upper Darby that they had as taxable or vice versa, uh, properties that existed on our file and not theirs or vice versa. But again, if you're talking about 20 or 30,000 tax records, um, the fact that there were sort of only 50 or so discrepancies is pretty good. Uh, we are, again, the, actively working with the county. And I, I would point out the county was enormously appreciative of Upper Darby's effort. <laughs> they said, uh, we, would, we would be thrilled if we got this kind of information and cooperation from other municipalities. So that sort of made our team feel pretty good internally uh, that the county was happy with our performance. Um, to try to make a long story short, we're very hopeful that those 40 or 50 properties will have a uh, negligible impact on the millage. Uh, so we're not ready to say uh, with exact certainty that we'll be able to do the 13.13, .13, but I would, I, I can say with reasonable certainty that we will be absolutely nowhere near the 13.25 that we passed with the cushion. Um, 
and we're we're very close to working that out with the county. So you could anticipate something, you know, 13.13 .13 or in the in the mid teens there, sort of at the highest. Okay, great, thank you. Um, back to you, Councilman Gwynn. If anybody else has anything to <clears throat> ask, we'll get it out now. Otherwise, thank you, and we'll move on. Okay, great, moving on. Next up, we have Leisure Services Committee, co-chairs Councilman Tunis Jr. and Silva, council members, uh, councilwoman women, Feralia and Blackwell. Um, and we do have a report from CA CAO Ron Gioni. So go ahead with your report. Oh, me? Yep. Oh, fantastic. Um, uh, Ms. Dobbins, if you could share your screen for me. Uh, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> so we're, uh, we're extremely fortunate in the township to have both the uh, Council Recreation Committee and the Mayor's Recreation Advisory Committee. Uh, we're also fortunate to have a lot of great uh, natural resources, uh, parks, trails, et cetera. Um, and I know that we've all been eager to, to kind of <clears throat> quantify these things and, and figure out where we are. And that's what uh, the mayor's advisory committee has, has undertaken here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you can go to the next, uh, the next slide, please. So the, for folks who don't know, the Recreation Advisory Committee is a volunteer committee uh, whose goal is to support the mayor's uh, policy agenda and also advise the mayor on matters related to recreation, open space, et cetera. Uh, the committee uh, has representation from all over the township and uh, has the ultimate goal of reflecting the racial and ethnic diversity of Upper Darby, uh, people of all ages and all backgrounds. Uh, including two high school student representatives, which we think is a really cool feature um, to have our, our high school kids get a taste for government and be involved. Uh, <clears throat> the goal of, of this particular project was to sort of catalog and assess where we are. What kind of parks do we have? What do they need? What kind of shape are they in? Um, and so the, the Recreation Committee undertook this work and now we're uh, happy to report to council. Um, in, in hopes that we can compare notes, right? In hopes that we can get uh, the Council Recreation Committee's uh, thoughts and combine them together with the Advisory Committee's thoughts and build a comprehensive plan for our parks. Uh, what we found was that the Department of Community and Natural Resources, uh, when, when you go to them for grant money, they're looking for, for lack of a better term, a, a comprehensive plan. They wanna know that your parks are integrated and that you're not just haphazardly sort of putting tennis courts there and basketball courts there and bike racks over here, but that you have a strategic vision for how you want recreation and park facilities to function. And so we wanna be responsive uh, to DCNR, you know, the, the Department of Community and Natural Resources, that's where the money is to support parks. And so, we wanted to be responsive to their specific needs. Uh, next slide, please. So in Upper Darby Township, just sort of at the base level, we have 34 parks and open spaces. The, the committee wanted to break them down into different types of parks, uh, multi-use parks, that is to say parks that have <clears throat> different types of facilities, uh, a basketball court and a tennis court and a playground, or you know, multi-use, uh, parks, ball fields, uh, plus a shelter, that kind of thing. Um, then we have single use or pocket parks that you might think of as a playground or a picnic table. If it's a, a smaller park that just has playground equipment, that would be a single use pocket park uh, playground. <clears throat> and then open spaces, a uh, kind of passive recreation where there aren't facilities. There isn't a water fountain, a bathroom, a tennis court, um, but it's just uh, green space, natural beauty uh, to be in, enjoyed. So that's kind of the broad picture of the parks that we have and the different types of spaces that they are. Uh, next slide, perfect. 
So I sort of alluded to this um, already. Uh, the Department of Community and Natural Resources put on a, a grant seminar and we had a couple members from the committee and the administration attend the seminar and we learned a lot about what DCNR wants to see before they grant money to support these kind of things. Um, and that's why we, uh, that's why the Recreation Committee decided to undertake this assessment because honestly, one of the things we found, uh, we we're talking, Ms. Dobbins met with the Southeast Regional Representative from DCNR and the representative noticed that number one, Upper Darby hasn't received very much money from DCNR, uh, but also uh, Allison pointed out to her that Upper Darby is larger than the city of Scranton. And even though they were the Southeast representative for DCNR, they were shocked to find out that Upper Darby is bigger than the city of Scranton and, and shocked to find out like, oh, the piece of the pie that Upper Darby should be getting should be similar in size, if not larger than a place like Scranton. So um, we need to do a better job as the administration and as council uh, sort of evangelizing about Upper Darby, making sure that people understand that we are the largest township in the country. We're the sixth largest municipality in the Commonwealth. And when it comes time to support things like open space and parks, that's the kind of fraction of state funding uh, that Upper Darby deserves. So <clears throat> that's why we need the assessment, that's why we need the plan, and that's why we're eager to work with the council committee on putting those things together and improving these grant applications going forward. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so again, purpose of the study, understand the 34 existing parks and open spaces, um, the, uh, the recreation committee took it upon themselves to visit all of these parks. Uh, they went out and did their own research and were able to find some tools that were, uh, available to survey parks, um, uh, you know, to assess different metrics within the park, uh, the condition of the equipment, the opportunities for improvement. Um, and so that's how they, <clears throat> That's how they developed it, uh, what services are offered, how easy it is to access the park. One of the, one of the really interesting metrics about parks and open spaces is how far does the average resident live from their nearest open space? And we haven't done that calculation in Upper Darby yet because we haven't gotten that far down the road, but it is a very important metric when you look at things like health outcomes and life expectancy, uh, people who live closer to open spaces, people who live closer to parks um, do better in terms of health metrics uh, and, and other quality of life metrics. So these are things that, <clears throat> uh, that we really wanted to try to quantify and start to move forward on. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think we can go to the next slide now. So <clears throat> one of the biggest things that, that is important is how do you score a park on opportunity? How do we know whether we should apply for this, this park or that park, this grant or that grant? Because <clears throat> um, some of our parks and some of the parks actually that I, that I really enjoy in the township they're sort of already great parks. And so there, in that sense, there isn't much opportunity for them to improve. Uh, and so they might, not, um, they might not score that well. They might not be in line for a grant application, uh, not because they're not a great facility, not because people don't get great use out of them, but maybe they're already kind of maxed out on their footprint. Maybe they already do a great job in their neighborhood, uh, and that's really great, as opposed to other parks where it might be a beautiful piece of ground, um, but might not be particularly activated, might not be a place that the community is accustomed to gathering, might not have the facilities to gather. Um, <clears throat> and I'll actually use uh, the second ward playground as an example. Uh, this is a, a really great park facility um, in a dense neighborhood where a lot of people have the opportunity to use it. 
But in the summertime, there's no shade, there's no shelter, there's no pavilion, right? So in the summertime, it's a very hot place to be. So there's a tremendous opportunity to activate the second ward playground uh, by putting in some shelter that would provide shade and make the park significantly more useful at its prime time. Um, and the thing about that one is we didn't actually need the survey so much for that one. The mayor, <laughs> the mayor has been committed to improving the facilities at the second ward playground for a long time, including the idea of the shelter. But it does, um, it does outline what we mean by opportunity and how we can uh, further activate these parks. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so uh, we've got two of these maps that just sort of break down the physical location and types of the parks. Um, you know, the, the multi-use parks are in blue and you can see the color coding on the left. Uh, if you go all the way to sort of the bottom left, you can see that a place like Pilgrim Park is one of those passive green spaces. It's a, it's a beautiful green space, wonderful trees, wonderful ability for uh, walking and recreation uh, of that type. Uh, but again, not the type of place where you would go to play basketball or uh, something like that because those facilities don't exist uh, in a green space. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, here you have the map of sort of the, the southwestern part showing, you know, other, other available parks and green spaces. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. So, you know, I think those slides are, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, now, this slide, very interesting. This is where we really get into the nuts and bolts of the assessment. So the parks were assessed on five categories on a one to four scale. So sort of the max score being somewhere in the 20 range. And <clears throat> this is what I was saying. You have your overall score, which is the second furthest from the right. And then you have the colored column, which is opportunity. And so <clears throat> if you were to sort of look at Beverly Hills recreation area, the, the top, most people, I think, casually would refer to Beverly Hills Recreation Area as the Marshall Road field. Um, there's a situation where you already have a lot of facilities, right? That, that park has great ball fields and bathrooms and parking. So you see a high overall score, but it also has tremendous potential. Opportunity, the opportunity score is pretty high. And the reason for that is there's a lot of opportunity to put to improve uh, access. There's a lot of opportunity to improve gathering uh, trails, bike racks, multimodal. So that's an example of a park that scores pretty high, but also has a lot of opportunity to grow. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, go down, and you see that in a couple other places like the Cardington Recreation Area. Um, or even the second ward playground, right? Again, a lot of facilities, but also a lot of opportunity to improve. Then you have a place like the Durham Recreation Area. Fabulous park, right? Activated at, at all hours of the day and night. In some cases, maybe a little too activated. Um, it's, it's really a great facility that gets used a ton by the community. Uh, and that's fantastic. And you would expect that when a park is in really good shape like that, the opportunity score might be a little bit lower. Now, does that mean that we're not gonna invest in Dermont? Absolutely not. Does it mean that we're not gonna pursue ways to make it better? No, cer certainly not, we are. But it's just interesting to understand this chart in terms of the opportunity that's available versus what is already there. Um, <clears throat> and again, you know, this is the assessment of the mayor's Recreation Advisory Council. We would really like to see the council committee um, at, you know, give meaningful input, have a, a fresh set of eyes and maybe a different perspective to inform uh, this data and these metrics so we can sort of work together and make sure, again, the ultimate goal is we have to get our fair share of funding from the Department of Community and Natural Resources. That, that is just essential, an essential priority of, of Mayor Keffer's administration 
uh, to make sure that our residents are getting that fair share of tax money that they're sending to Harrisburg. Um, so I don't wanna go through every single park, but I, I sort of pulled out a couple um, to, to give you an idea. Uh, and uh, next slide, please. All right, so overall, obviously we have a lot of different parks. We have a lot of different things, a lot of different needs, but there are some common needs, some things that a lot of our parks, if not all of them share in common. Um, our playground equipment is old. It needs to be updated. Uh, and that's true basically across the township. In terms of bike lanes, bike paths, walking trails, you know, we really need our parks to be interconnected. It's like, if you, if you go to Naylor's Run and the tennis courts are full, uh, wouldn't it be great to be able to just hop back on your bike and ride to another park that has tennis courts uh, or walk down a trail to another park that has tennis courts? Like we, that kind of interconnectivity is just something that we need more of. We need a comprehensive trail and path system to connect our green spaces. Same thing, I mentioned the second ward playground and shade from a pavilion. We need more gathering spaces, especially with COVID now more than ever, right? Obviously we hope to come out of it, but at the same time, uh, every community needs places where people can gather outside because that's where we can gather safely at this point. Um, <clears throat> better signage and better programming. Same kind of thing, I'll use the tennis court example. If you go to Naylor's Run and the tennis courts are full and it's phenomenal. Naylor's Run has a very vibrant tennis community and those courts are often full. Well, there should be a sign there that directs you in a meaningful way to other township facilities, as opposed to just having to sort of scratch your head and be like, I don't know. Um, or uh, yeah, so just signage and visibility generally, and then programming. You know, we can, we can activate these public spaces in great ways um, things that are simple in some ways. I, I'm sure that we have volunteers in the community who would love to do yoga in the park or Tai Chi in the park. Um, you know, different little programmatic things that we can do for people of all ages to get people out, get people moving and activate these, these important public spaces. So those are the common needs of our park system. Uh, I know I, I tried to go quickly. I wanted to be respectful of people's time, but also make sure you got a lot of good information. And um, yeah, very happy to to take questions and, and input and, and hear what people have to say. Um, I, I have something to say. Yes, go ahead, Lisa, sorry. So I wanna know, after one whole year of asking where parks were located, I never received a list, but yet a recreation committee that was formed by the mayor that's not on council that none of us even communicated with knew where every park was and went out and assessed all this. I chaired that committee for a year and nobody had the decency or the respect to tell me what was going on. You preach transparency. That is not transparency. Sure, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy to answer that question. So, the list of every park in the township has been on the township website since the previous administration, and that link was provided to council. No, so it was the, not. I never received it. I asked you. Kept but, saying, "I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you," and I never got it. Councilwoman Ferralia, respectfully. Respectfully, I would suggest that you stand down because the mm -hmm. email exists, it is provable, and I believe you responded to it. So, and the list has been on the township website since the previous administration. Okay. So I, I think everybody should kind of take a deep breath here um, because that list has existed on the township website dating back to the previous mm -hmm. administration. Then why weren't they communicating with our board when we were going around, Danielle and Matt and myself, going around and checking out all the parks? How come they weren't communicating with us? Sure. So the Recreation Advisory Committee, its stated purpose is to advise the mayor and support the mayor's agenda. And as I stated during the presentation, 
what we would like to do is get multiple perspectives. We would love to have the perspective of the Council Recreation Committee, and we would love to combine the Council's perspective with the Recreation Advisory Committee's perspective and come up with a comprehensive plan for the parks. Hmm. Um, all right, Councilman Silva. Yeah, uh, sure. I, I think something we could do now that would be a little more helpful is the parks are listed by name on the township website. Uh, many of us don't know the names of the parks. Most of them don't have signage, including that name. Um, we apparently have the information of where the parks are by their names, amenities that are available at each park. Um, to, to be fair, like as a father, this is information I use regularly when uh, my family and I are looking for a place to go. Unfortunately, that information is not available here in Upper Darby, uh, which I think is a detriment to our residents. I think that's a detriment to people considering using Upper Darby's recreation facilities. So if we have this information, is there any way we could possibly update the website with it so that people would know where the ball fields are, where the swing sets are, where what time the parks open and close, uh, where there's bathrooms or what have you. Yeah, 100%. No, that's absolutely a great idea. We would love to use this information to update the website. And just to be clear, in no way was I in possession of this information and sitting on it. This information was compiled by the Recreation Advisory Committee, and I am now presenting it to the council um, so it, it's not like this information has been sitting in a desk drawer. Uh, they compiled it and now I'm uh, presenting it. So I don't want you to have, yeah, but, but I agree. It's a great idea to update the website. And one of their findings is we need better signage and, and information. Absolutely. Yeah, I get, think I sorry, go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. No, you, you have the floor. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I think that would be something that would be kind of a value adder too to the township. We have 34 parks and most people wouldn't know that. Um, I, I remember trying to compile the, I mean, I, I, I believe that this stuff wasn't sitting in a drawer because I remember like first getting on council and going to leisure services to try to go through their maintenance records. And it, um, yeah, it, it clearly wasn't super available. So, um, all right, well, yeah, if we could do that, that would be, I think that would be a huge benefit and, uh, and I was, uh, to be fair, I was invited to the commission's meeting yesterday. What, what was the first meeting I was able to attend of, of theirs. So um, yeah, I look forward to working with them. I mean, anything we can do to make the parks here better. Oh, absolutely. No, thank you, Councilman Silva. I should mention that. Council requested to have representation on the mayor's rec advisory committee and the mayor agreed to have council representation on the committee so um, that will that will definitely help the coordination going forward. Uh, can you also send us uh, the presentation so that we have it? I mean, some people were trying to take pictures of the slides as you were showing them, but can you send it to council so that we have it? To... Oh yeah, sure. That would be really great. That would be really helpful. Yep. Councilman Gwynn. You need to unmute yourself, Councilman Gwynn. There you uh, go. Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was very informative. Uh, and I think it's something that represents what could be a, a good app that we can develop and have available for all the constituents, as well as, as you say, this guide uh, for different things and different events like your trails and how you can intermix those with the uh, parts and linkage. Um, I think it's a great uh, asset that we need to polish and develop. And we should know who's on this commission as well. It'd be helpful. Sure, absolutely. Um, I believe they're all, well, yeah, absolutely, yep. Um, Councilman Tunis. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Council President Wentz. <clears throat> I just want to echo that. Um, yeah, did we, we did receive the the list of parks, as well as the, um, in my opinion, um, there's a advisory committee is separate from the leisure service committee. 
um, they've done their part in their research and how they um, want to approach this. Uh, the administration has given us the opportunity to bring ourselves to the table. Um, myself and I'm going to work with uh, Chairman Silva, as well as Councilwoman Feralia, and uh, as well as Councilwoman Blackwell, um, so that we can give something to the administration that concrete represents what the committee um, views. Um, it's important that we understand that uh, we're still a body, right? We're still two two different bodies, right? We have the council, we have the administration. Um, we can communicate, but we also have opportunity to bring different points of views together to make something great. Um, and I think uh, I like what I've seen in um, the couple of the slides that we have seen in the study, but I'm also confident that our committee can bring something to the table. So I do want to coordinate with Chairman Silva and set up a meeting this month um, so that we can bring something um, to the administration. And I'm hoping that everyone's voices will be heard and will be in, um, the best for the residents of Upper Abbey Township. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Uh, any other council members have any questions or concerns on the report? Uh, Councilwoman Blackwell? Okay, I just wanna say, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, the report was interesting and valuable. Thank you for the enlightenment. Um, recreation is a vital part of society. Um, it is one of the basis of our economic stability. Bottom yes. line, thank you. That's a great Thanks. point. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay, great. So then um, Councilman Silva, do you, or do you wanna continue with your report? Sure, absolutely. Um, does anyone from the committee have anything to bring forward to council at this time for leisure services? I do. Um, so I, I got the opportunity. Um, it wasn't last week, it was week before last to meet with Sean McIntosh of Upper Abbey Trails and take a tour um, from Naylor's Run um, through um, Beverly Hills Recreation Park leading up to um, some of the green space, which is in my district on uh, that mirrors Lamport Road. Um, <clears throat> and he um, provided me with some PowerPoints and some insight. Some of this, um, some of these things that are on the PowerPoint he shared with me have been kind of covered a little bit about the administration because he also soaked administration support on these things. I would like to share that with the Leisure Service Committee also and um, just get some ideas just moving forward, especially since we've I think we're gonna meet this month. Great, that's wonderful. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good, uh, Councilman Tunis. We'll, we, uh, I, I certainly will, uh, we'll, we'll set up a meeting. Uh, we'll set up a meeting soon because I, I think there is, I, I also met with, uh, with, with, with Mr. McIntosh and, and I, I think that, um, yeah, there, there's a lot to discuss there. All right, uh, sounds Sounds good. Anyone else from the committee have anything to bring forward? Anyone from council? Councilman right, well, Sadiq. Oh. Councilman Sadiq. Yes, um, I'd like to request our uh, laser committee that um, when uh, the committee, the subcommittee will visit the parks, uh, please include the um, uh, council member from that district. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Please add the district's councilman so coordinate with uh, together. Okay. That's that, 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 that is that's a good idea. I want to mention it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, anyone else from council have any more items? All right. Uh, well, I believe that concludes our report at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this point in time, we have Public Safety Committee co-chairs, uh, Council Councilman Burke and Councilwoman Blackwell, members Councilman Tunis and Councilman Silva. Um, take it away, Public Safety. Uh, go ahead, Daniel. 
Um, well, um, we're just in the process of just meeting to just discuss issues that are going on that involve public safety. Thank you. Uh, but now you have to ask anyone if the, if anyone in the committee has anything to bring to the committee. Is there anyone in the in the committee that has anyone to bring to the committee? I do, Daniel. Thank you. Okay. Um, first question is: uh, I'm glad that we have a parking uh, app now. Um, what is the cost to the township, or uh, is there any cost to the township with the new parking meter app? Uh, yeah, no, that's a that's a really good question. It's a it's a no cost uh, it's a no cost option uh, to the township. The um, fees are passed on. Um, we did ha we did buy we purchased some equipment uh, in order you know handheld devices and things. Um, but uh, yeah, no uh, revenue generator. It's a it's a positive revenue program for the township for sure. Okay, thanks. Uh, second, uh, I know we spoke. Uh, uh, parking Director uh, Sakel Coles uh, spoke about working on ordinance in uh, January or De uh, February uh, a couple months ago about permit parking. Uh, are we anywhere near on that ordinance? And can we uh, get together and talk about it? Because I know we pushed it back about three or four months ago. We talked about took it off the table. Um, oh yeah, go ahead, Mayor. Um, Councilman Burke, uh, uh, Sakel Coles, the parking director, requested that we table it further, that it gets tabled further because he's working with the employees to get this passport up and running first. And then when she, you know, when she feels like she's ready with the staff too, because it does require staff and, and another system, then she, then she'll let us know. All right, I was just looking for an update because I know we said we were going to talk about it in January or February. Sure. And that was for the parking, that was for uh, overnight parking permit, correct? Well, it's, it's residential parking. Residential parking, right. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess this will call under public safety also. Uh, the pilot program, are we going to start that uh, for, you know, trash cleanups in the uh, sixth and seventh district? I know we got away from that. Uh, are we going to get back into that uh, in the next couple of months? So the initial pilot program, which we started before the pandemic hit, was um, regenerated or resurrected in September, and it's been going really well. And we have to work with um, the public works with, with Joe Martin to see if we need more equipment to expand, you know, another couple streets. Mm -hmm. It's been normally... Um, normally the compliance rate is around 80% now. So, you know, notices were given door to door. Councilman um, Tunis gave them out a couple times. And then there was like the last warning, next time is ticketing. And so people that haven't moved their cars are getting like the $25 tickets. So after a couple of Mondays, it's, it's on the first and the third Monday of the month. It's, it's been going really well. So yeah, we are planning on expanding it. And uh, I guess uh, I know in the beginning of the last year, we, we've got reports on uh, money in, money out through the parking meters. Uh, can we uh, at least start getting them every month again? I know we had it a couple of times last year, some reports. Um, is that possible? On the parking uh, meters and the tickets and if the tickets are being paid and what the status is. Oh, they are. I know we we had two reports last year through uh, Sakel Coles. Yeah, I'll, I'll certainly talk to Director Coles about it and see what see what we can pull together. Okay, thank you. I just want to verify that the pilot program you're talking about was a street sweeping pilot program for those who had weren't caught up on because you didn't specifically say it. So I just wanted yeah. to that program that you're speaking of. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, right. And then I just saw Councilman Sadiq's hand. Uh, yes, uh, I have two two items to um, talk about uh, regarding the uh, the street camera. Did anybody update what's uh, where, how many we have all all over the township, and do you have any future plan to put some more area for the uh, uh, street uh, camera? 
And uh, second thing I would like to add <clears throat> the um, 70 to 100 block of uh, Midway. The constituent reached me that um, they're talking about the speed bump. I did talk with them that, yeah, Township have some uh, uh, pilot program for that, but she, she wants me to bring this thing to this uh, meeting. I said, okay, I will bring this one to the meeting that seven to 100 block of Midway looking for a um, speed bump. Yeah, sure. So um, I guess I'll do the second one and then the first one. In terms of uh, speed bumps, speed humps, et cetera, there are, uh, there are PennDOT standards and regulations. You have to have a certain volume of traffic in order to qualify to be able to put in uh, the traffic calming device. And so we, we can certainly take a look at various streets uh, where residents feel like it might be appropriate, but it is important for people to know uh, that there are PennDOT standards. So we can't just um, go and install those kind of devices uh, on, on just any street or on just any block. Um, and I apologize, I should have answered the first question first because now it slipped my mind. Uh, the, 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 uh, the camera. Oh, the cameras. Security yes. camera. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Mr. Uh, Binch, before you go there. Um, yeah. So uh, the paint that has to be involved to put the speed hump, speed bump, or, or how, the, how the things work, how it process work. Uh, Mayor, ahead, like, Mayor. Mayor would like to weigh in. Go ahead. So we do have speed humps. The first speed humps in the township are on Owen Avenue between Marshall Road and Garrett. That's the, kind of our pilot program for speed humps. Um, PennDOT's involved to the extent that they have standards. And our engineer, uh, Michael Lante, is working on sort of standardizing. It, it has to do with what CAO Rangioni said about the volume of traffic on the road. It has to do about the slope of a road. And, and uh, what we do on our end is we can, we can do uh, tests that um, will, will demonstrate the volume of traffic and also the speed of traffic. I can't remember what they're called. Um, I guess I think they're like speed tests. We have the equipment. Um, and in fact, the next, uh, the next street that we're going to test is Parkview and St. Lawrence. So we don't have, you know, we're limited by our staff. We're limited by the equipment that we do have, but, but running that test is one of the first, um, first things that we would have to do before considering putting in speed humps. And our Mike, Mike Galante does visit streets that where we have complaints. He's already been on Parkview. We're having an outdoor meeting on Saturday with the residents to talk about um, speed hump and other traffic calming, um, traffic calming things that we can, we can do for that, for that area. And we're just going to meticulously kind of go um, based on requests from council and from residents from there. So I think we should, if you want, we can put Midway on, on the list of places to be considered. Yeah, please put, do so. So the final thing, uh, so the pen dot has to be approved, that thing? I, I, want to, I want to understand that. Well, so pen dots involved to, to the extent that um, they do set standards so that so that there is some sort of organization sort of across the street for them. And we also, every, every year we get money from PennDOT based on the mileage of our state highways. It's our the liquid fuels fund. So I think that's kind of, it's like a carrot and a stick or it's like the, the way that they sort of, um, they work with us. We also, when, when we wanna do certain things on the state roads, we do work with them directly. But it is, we're going to follow the PennDOT guidelines because that's sort of the right thing to do. And the consistent thing, if we stick with PennDOT, then, then it will be easier to explain why we could, why we can, why we can't have a speed hump. But the speed hump isn't the only traffic calming device either, so that there are other ones as well. And Michael Lante is really great. Uh, he has, has a wide breadth of knowledge and a lot of energy. So... He's, he's interested in helping our residents and with, with their the speeding problems that they have on, on our streets. Sure, thank you. Good explanation. And the cameras? 
camera. Yeah, sure. So uh, the cameras are uh, another particular interest and priority of, of the mayor, and we're continuing to pursue them along two fronts, one being illegal dumping cameras, uh, and we've had some success with the limited number of illegal dumping cameras that we have, and the goal is to expand that program. It's a little bit complicated uh, to expand any camera program because you need the technology and the manpower or the, the people power, excuse me, uh, because you have to install the camera, but then you have to monitor the footage, right? The camera doesn't actually catch anybody if nobody's watching the tape. So it's sort of multifaceted. And there are a couple of grant programs that we've been pursuing there. In terms of the street cameras, this one is really, really important and critically needed uh, in the, the 69th Street business area, especially the Long Lane business area. Um, and, and we actually had a meeting earlier today with the, the largest stakeholder and landlord down there uh, about uh, putting cameras uh, on the street. They have concerns about shoplifting. We have other public safety concerns. Um, and everybody sort of agrees that, that those cameras would be valuable. The question is, how do we get the other business owners to join together um, and support the camera initiative? And how do we make the plan with our police department and public works to make sure that those cameras are monitored? So <clears throat> it is interesting that you would that you would ask and that we had this meeting earlier this morning. Uh, so that's a, a good coincidence and does sort of show um, the, the importance, uh, the importance of those cameras. It's all part of the mayor's goal down there. It's part of the reason that we've been uh, ramped up the street sweeping and the litter cleanup and the cameras are a part of that. You know, in order to catch people doing things, uh, the cameras would be extraordinarily helpful. So we're looking for buy-in from the business community down there, both literally and figuratively uh, to help us get that done. And, and we hope to do that in 2021. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Great. Uh, okay. Um, Councilwoman Black uh, Billups. Thank you, Council President Wentz. Um, uh, thank you, Councilor Sadiq, for bringing up the uh, speed hump, speed cushions. Um, I forgot about that because a resident asked me about it, and um, on the seventy-two hundred block of Bradford Road. Um, so, if you can put that on the list as well just to um, another street to look at because um, the resident said it's a lot of children on that street and traffic is horrendous. And um, so I just wanted to bring that up also. Okay. Thank you. And I see Councilman Gwynn's hand. You are muted. Hi, I had uh, some places as well uh sellers avenue uh we talked about this before and also lakeview uh the, in the residents there were looking for that as well i realized your previous based on your previous comments how you're proceeding on that and we're waiting our turn in line uh i do also want to bring up the fact that uh we had some people uh get out of the philadelphia fire uh, department. They uh, they passed their exams. We have four candidates that are now Upper Darby firemen. I wanted to bring that up and uh, congratulate them and welcome them to the community of our firefighters. Congratulations. Congrats. Absolutely. Okay. Any other council members? Okay, administration. All right, seeing none. Is that the conclusion of the public safety report? Yes, President Wentz, thanks. Great, awesome. Uh, so next up we have public health and environment, oops, sorry, public health and environmental affairs committee co-chairs Tunis and Silva, members Billups and Sadiq. Take it away, gentlemen. Uh, yes, thanks, Council President. Um, uh, public Health and Environmental 
uh, well, I guess we'll be meeting soon. We, we still have to pick up work on the TNR ordinance and, and there was a couple other items that we're going to be looking at, but, um, uh, I guess we'll, we'll be scheduling a meeting about that, uh, in the coming month. Uh, does anyone else from the committee have anything to bring forth to health and environmental affairs at this time? Uh, anyone from council? I'm 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 the, from the committee. Oh, I'm sorry, you are. Yes, I I I can't see you from here. I'm, I apologize. Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman, do we have any plan for this winter time for the for the cats, uh, the street cats, or the feral cats? Uh, yes. to my knowledge, uh, I'm sorry. No, I mean, it's, it, you're saying we, we still have to get our TNR ordinance, trap neuter release ordinance together. Um, yeah, so it hasn't really been finalized. I mean, uh, in, in the past, I, I, I think it's, it was sort of a more punitive approach. And I think this, this new TNR ordinance, when it passes, will be more of a, of like more of a preventative. Uh, and then we'll, uh, hopefully we can do more for that. Other, otherwise, unfortunately, I, I don't believe at this time we have anything set in place. Is that, is that your understanding as well, Council yes. President? Yeah, I mean the ordinance that's in place um, it, it, the, for the cats themselves. It's it's um, it's part of the wildlife ordinance, and it treats them like they're dogs. And it indicates that the Upper Darby Township has their own animal shelter, which we do not. It's very outdated, so it's been kind of put on hold uh, until we could get our most you know our TNR uh, ordinance up and running. But if you are having issues with feral cats, we do have helping paws of Upper Darby that helps with, uh, you know, colon uh, cat colonies and things like that, uh, as well as the township. So I guess it's a matter of giving more information than cats outside. So if you want, you and I can have a further conversation on it um, sure. and go from there. Would that thank be helpful? You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, do any other members of the committee have anything to bring forward to uh, health and environmental? Do any members of council? I believe that is uh, concludes our report then, uh, council Great. president. Thank you. Next up is planning zoning and Building Code Committee, co-chairs Gwyn and Billups, members Barnett and Tunis Jr. We do have the introduction of ordinance number 3090. Uh, so if we can get, um, before we do the official introduction, could we get a brief on it so that we can have council committee conversation on it before we do the formalized introduction? So Solicitor Kilkenny? Sure. Uh, 3090 is a vacant property uh, registration ordinance. Um, and let me go ahead and pull it up here. Open up, open up. Uh, trying to. My version was not opening. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay. Um, so, whereas Upper Darby Council recognizes an increase in the number of vacancies and abandoned properties located in the township, whereas councils conclude that it is necessary to enact a vacant property registration to ensure that owners of and other interested parties related to vacant properties are known to the township and can be contacted if necessary, whereas the council desires to ensure that owners of and or interested parties related to vacant properties are aware of the obligations of ownership under relevant codes and regulations, whereas the vacant property registration is in the best interest of the health, public, uh, health welfare, and safety of uh, Upper Darby Township to ensure that maintenance and properties assist with blight in the township. Therefore, be it enacted uh, as follows. Uh, there is a series of uh, de definitions, one of applicable codes, another of enforcement officers, uh, what is a foreclosed real property, uh, what is a mortgagee, and what is a vacant property owner. 
uh, Section 2, establishment of, uh, of a registry. Pursuant to the provisions of this part, a township shall, uh, shall uh, establish a registry cataloging each abandoned property within a township containing the information required therein. Uh, section 3, registration of foreclosed real property. A mortgage foreclosed real property. Any more uh, mortgagee holds a mortgage on a real property located within Upper Darby Township shall perform an inspection of the property to determine vacancy or occupancy upon default by the mortgagor. The mortgagee shall within 30 days of the inspection register the property with L&I uh, on the form provided by the township and indicate whether the property is vacant or occupied. Um, two. If a property is occupied uh, but remains in default, it shall be inspected by the mortgagee or his designee monthly until the mortgagor or other party remedies uh, default. If it is found to be vacant or shows evidence of vacancy at which time it is deemed vacant, the mortgagee shall within 10 days of that inspection update the property registration to vacancy status on, on um, forms provided by the township. Uh, three. Uh, registration pursuant to the section shall contain the name of the mortgagee and the server, uh, direct mailing address of the mortgagee and the server, uh, a direct contact name, telephone number of both parties, email, fax, or contact information. Then tax foreclosed properties. Any owner of a property is subject to a tax foreclosure shall within 30 days of the notice of tax foreclosure action register the property with the Department of L&I on the forms provided to the township. If the property is occupied but remains the subject of tax foreclosure, it shall be inspected by the owner, a designee every 30 days until the owner or other property remedies the default. Two, if, the vacant, if it is vacant, the owner shall, within 10 days of vacancy, update the property registration to vacancy status on forms provided by the township. Registration pursuant to this township, it has the same uh, information that they have to give, name, address, contact information. Fees, a non-refundable uh, annual registration fee shall be assessed uh, as per the Upper Darby Township fee schedule and shall accompany, accompany the registration form. The fee shall be paid no uh, later than January 31st of the following year, uh, uh, following the initial registration until the property is no longer considered foreclosed as defined by this part. I wanna bring to council's attention, uh, we'll probably, if, the, if council wants to move forward on this ordinance, have a separate resolution establishing um, the fee. Um, I had emailed uh, Mr. McSween uh, this morning to see if he had any input. Uh, he was busy today, didn't get a chance to get back to me uh, for this meeting. So what I did is in the interim, I emailed uh, the, um, the uh, director of code uh, in Norristown where I'm also a solicitor and they have a similar ordinance and have had it for several years and uh, they charge $200 per year just to give a baseline of what a, another municipality and, and the Philadelphia suburbs charges for this, that may be something we consider or something near that fee. B, all registration fees must be paid directly from the mortgagee, service trustee or owner. Third party registration fees are not allowed without con the consent of the township. Uh, the section shall also apply to properties that have been the subject of foreclosure sale where the title was transferred to the beneficiary of a mortgage involved in the foreclosure and any properties transferred under deed in lieu of foreclosure sale. Property subjects to depart shall remain under the annual registration requirements of the section and the inspection requirements of this part. Any person or legal entity that, that has registered property under this section must report a change of information contained in registration within 10 days of the change. Uh, failure of the mortgage, mortgagee and their owner to properly register or to modify the re registration form Time to done to reflect the change of circumstance required by this part in viola is violation of this part and subject to enforcement. Five, uh, enforcement and penalties. Any uh, person, business, or entity who shall violate the provisions of this ordinance shall be liable under conviction thereof to fines of not less than, uh, than $500, nor more than $1,000 plus costs of prosecution. And any such fines and penalties as may be collected uh, as provided by law. Uh, there, the section six, we shall follow the property maintenance code. There will be seven inspections for violations. Eight, uh, there is an effective date. And nine, there is a repeal or clause. And there goes uh, my summary uh, of, this, um, of this ordinance. 
And I don't know uh, if Mayor Keffer uh, wanted to say something to this. I, she texted me before she, she may want to give a, a brief introduction and some context. Okay, great. Uh, Mayor Keffer, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I hope the council will consider, you know, passing this ordinance after consideration. It's going to be a very useful tool for us as we combat blight. Right, right now, it's sort of um, how haphazard how we figure out that a property may or not be may or may not be vacant because the grass grows to a certain height. <coughs> there's a huge pile of trash in the back or whatever, that kind of thing. And it's sort of, we're dependent on, you know, resident complaints or maybe, uh, a, you know, a, a request from somebody in council or somebody just happens to catch it. This way we know where the properties are that are empty and we can, there's the contact information for the, the mortgage holder is part of this ordinance and we can, we can contact them more quickly and hopefully, um, also make them aware that we know where they are, right? Mm -hmm. Might have to do less and less abatements if um, if the banks or the mortgage companies you know, take care of their properties right away. I mean, abandoned properties are also, can also become um, a public health hazard, right? Animals, rodents, that kind of thing. So this is um, a useful tool for what I understand. It does work in other municipalities such as Norristown and Reading and I think this would be really helpful to our code enforcement division. And just what good for the overall quality of life for, for our residents and homeowners. Great, awesome, thank you. Uh, uh, so are there any questions or concerns on this ordinance by council members? All right, I'm not seeing any. Oh, I'm sorry, I- um, Sorry, go ahead, sorry, I missed you, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is pools. Uh, I, I know uh, some areas, uh, especially places where pools are, are just left abandoned, that, that can certainly be a big health issue. I'm, I'm, I'm for this and I look forward to it. I think this will be a big asset. Thank you. Great, that's a good point. Um, okay, anyone else? Okay, so um, seeing no one else, um, can we get a motion to advertise uh, ordinance number 3090? Sure, I'd like to make that motion. Absolutely. Seconded. Silva and Sadiq. Uh, great. Uh, any questions or concerns on advertising this ordinance? Seeing none, turn your microphones on. All those in favor of advertising ordinance number 3090, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say your name. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Um, we also have a resolution at this time, uh, 3021, that is going to also be discussed for approval. So if we can have Solicitor Kilkenny to give us um, a reading of 0321. I don't know what I said before. That's okay. Uh, I saw Mr. Galante on this yeah. uh, on this Zoom call. I wonder if he could talk about it just briefly before I go ahead and, and give a reading, if that's okay, that uh, Madam President. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Galante. Good evening. Uh, this resolution was previously passed by the council. Uh, it's a part of the Act 537 requirements uh, for sewer planning. And basically what we're saying is that this project is in compliance with the sewer planning requirements. Uh, they need a resolution of, by, from council uh, to move forward with sewer planning. Essentially, when it was previously approved, uh, they were basing it off a flow of around 83,000 gallons a day. Uh, after coordinating with the DEP and looking at some of the numbers, it was determined that the flow is more realistically around 53. The, the anticipated flow is around 53,000 uh, or so gallons per day. And DEP recommended that we just get another resolution as we move forward. So basically all we're doing is passing a resolution that was previously uh, adopted by the council with a a, le a less anticipated flow. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. And, and of course, this is uh, a lot of this is all dependent on uh, what the zoning hearing board does uh, with uh, their relief. And I believe they've said the, they're going to render their decision on the relief that was requested right before uh, the holidays, I guess, on the 21st. Uh, right. So uh, obviously, uh, this uh, is, is all dependent on that. But in the hopes of that, they that, uh, you know, uh, we we're moving forward, wanted to uh, pass this uh, resolution uh, to get everything in place. And if they don't get the zoning relief, then that's a whole other question. And this may be moved for now. So, uh, okay. So I'll go ahead and, and do a reading if that's okay, Madam President. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Yep. And this is just a, a form resolution uh, from PennDOT. So this is, uh, I don't think we'll have the ability to, um, uh, I mean, from DEP, uh, we don't have the ability to really alter this. Uh, so whereas section five of the act, January 24th, 1966, public law known as the Pennsylvania Sewage Facilities Act as amended in the rules and regulations for the Pennsylvania Department of uh, DEP, thought that they're under chapter 71 of, of title 25, of the Pennsylvania code requires the municipality to adopt an official sewage facilities plan providing for sewage services adequate to prevent contamination of waters of the Commonwealth and or environmental health hazards from sewage waste and to revise said plan whenever it is necessary to determine whether a proposed method of sewage disposal for a new land development conforms to a comprehensive program of pollution control and water quality management. Whereas MCBH Drexel Line Plaza LP has proposed the development of a parcel identified as a Drexel Line shopping center and described in the attached sewer, uh, sewage facilities planning module and proposes that such subdivision shall be served by um, the boxes checked, sewer tap-ins, whereas Upper Darby Township finds a subdivision described in the attached uh, sewage facilities planning module conforms to applicable sewage related zoning and other uh, sewage related municipal ordinances and plans, uh, and plans and to be comprehensive program pollution control and water quality management. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the uh, Council of Upper Darby Township hereby adapts, adopts and submits the DAP for its approval as a revision to the uh, official sewage facilities plan of the municipality, the above reference sewage uh, facilities planning module, which is attached thereof. And I, uh, that completes my reading, uh, Madam President. Great. Um, can we get a motion to approve resolution 0321? Please turn your mics on. I see Councilman Gwynn to motion and then a second. I need second. a second. Okay, Ms. Billup. Are there any questions or concerns on resolution 0321? Uh, Councilman Burke. My understanding is just on the sewage, uh, sewer tapping. It's not on the actual land development, correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, we obviously gave preliminary uh, the approval. They have to come back for final, but preliminary is contingent upon zoning relief being granted. So we're all kind of waiting for that to uh, happen or not happen. Uh, and this of course would be moved if, if they didn't receive uh, zoning relief. So we'll still have to approve the land, uh, the land development another time. Is that correct? Yeah, you, it, 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 much more limited in scope. But yes, there will be final land development approval. Uh, there are many more things and factors that go into preliminary uh, land development approval, but they do have to come back uh, to dot some, uh, dot some I's and cross some T's for final, yes. Because yeah, I, 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 noticed, I noticed yesterday the zoning notice changed uh, 42 multifamily units and they didn't answer that question last time we had them on uh, Zoom. So they, um, and I don't want to speak for how the zoning hearing board uh, will decide, but I know a bunch of council members uh, were on that meeting uh, as well as the mayor. Um, and I believe what happened is, is they, the attorney for the applicant, Mr. Schuster and D'Amico asked that, uh, said that there, that, a, that in fact, the application was, there was a conflict between what was on the application, and what was on the plan. And the plan had a greater number, I believe 46 or something like that, yeah. than 42, and asked the zoning hearing board grant the relief for the 46. 
So we'll see what the zoning hearing board does. Yeah. Well, that's, they were single family. The zoning board says multifamily now, Sean. They were all single. They were all single. So okay. I, was, um, yeah. I wasn't trying to give, you know, have a meeting here. I just wanted to make sure that we were going to have a new, uh, a finalized on land development. Yeah. Hey, I see Councilman, uh, sorry, before CAO, did you want to weigh in? Oh, no, I was just uh, saying yes, there will be final land development to Councilman Burke. Okay, thank great. You. Just uh, And I see Councilman Barnett. Uh, thank you, President Wentz. Uh, uh, the uh, record that was established at the zoning hearing was for 48 additional units. 48. Uh, yeah, and uh, they had pr prior approval for 142 and they are apartment units of various bedroom counts. And uh, so they, they will, uh, if approved, be able to construct 190 units. Yes. Thank you for the clarification, Councilman Bonnet. Thanks, Tom. Um, okay, so are there any other questions or concerns on resolution 0321? Great, seeing none. Uh, everyone turn on your microphones. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say your name. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Um, I just, Solicitor Kilkenny, I just wanna verify um, for, we did the introduction of ordinance number 3090. You did a, did that count as a first reading or did you just do a, I felt like you read through. The, I, yeah, I read through it. I think that counts as a first reading. I, I don't think there's a need. I, I think I read it unless if any council member objects, I think I read it pretty extensively. Yeah. Yes, I do too. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss a. Scintillating as it was. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I just want to make sure because uh, I asked for a summary and then I realized that I missed this, the reading. So yeah. Um, just want to check. Okay, great. Okay, so next up, uh, so uh, Councilman Gwynn, would you like to finish your report for the zoning committee? Uh, yeah. I think we have resolution ordinance number 3091. Uh, no. Not on my agenda. That's in the municipal services. No, you my need bad. to go back and recap your uh, zoning committee's uh, report of anyone ha who has something for the committee itself. Does anybody have anything for the zoning board committee? Anybody from council? I do. Yeah. Danielle? Thank you. Uh, You're blacked out. I'm sorry. I'm here. Yeah, there you go. Can you see me now? Okay. No, I don't have anything to report. No. Oh. That used to... Okay. <coughs> then we're moving on. Okay. Great. So next up, we have uh, municipal services li licensing and public works committee co chairs, Councilman Sadiq and Tunis Jr., and members Wagner and Burke. And then we have the introduction of ordinance number 3091. Uh, um, so Solicitor Richardson, can you give us uh, a summary so that we can actually have a conversation before we do the formal introduction? Or do the, I don't know. No problem. Work your magic. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Council President Woods. Um, what I will do is give a summary, and then I believe the mayor has some commentary on this particular ordinance also. Great. Uh, so this is an ordinance of Upper Darby Township, Delaware County, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, amending ordinance 2972 regarding the annual report due date for refuse and recyclable collected uh, by commercial landlords and other applicable persons repealing all ordinance or parts thereof inconsistent herewith and providing a severability clause. Whereas uh, July 16, 2008, Upper Darby Township Council enacted ordinance 2972, establishing a program for the collection of residential and commercial waste and single stream recyclable materials and establishing penalties for the violation of the ordinance uh, in Ralea. Uh, sections 7B and 7C provide that commercial landlords 
persons or entities conducting community activities that generate refuse and or recyclables must file an annual report no later than January 31st. Whereas the council desires to delegate the due date of the annual report, the mayor and the administration, and now therefore be it, um, be it and it is hereby ordained by the Upper Darby, Darby, Upper Darby Township Council, it is hereby enacted and ordained by the authority of saying as follows, uh, changing section 7B to said report must be filed with the township by a date determined by the administration. The same as follows for section 7C, effective date, repeller, and um, enacted and ordained. So ends the reading. Great, thank you. Uh, Mayor Keffer? So over, over the last, um, over the last few years, I've been doing, did research on our, on our recycling programs and the grants that we apply for and that we are qualified for. And one is called the 904 Performance Grant. It's through the DEP. And the way they base the grant award is um, they look at commercial recycling and residential recycling. So whichever one's lower is the level that you get funded at. Um, and for the last, it's close to like 15 years, we get anywhere from 79,000 to 89,000. And that's because our commercial recycling um, tonnage is, uh, is at that level. Um, it's based on population <laughs> and that kind of thing too. So the ordinance that I'm asking council to uh, consider changes this, um, the date when the commercial uh, business owners need to return their recycling form to the township. For whatever reason, the, the ordinance that stands now um, requires everybody to get back to the township by January 31st. And we have a 2% a return rate. Also, the way the program has been run, there's no follow up. So if you didn't return it, you're not going to hear from us either. And I I just am requesting some flexibility so that the, the report from the businesses is due when, when the report is due and not this arbitrary uh, January 31st date. Because I, I would like to see, you know, I'd like to see the numbers higher. I would like to see us be able to qualify for this recycling performance grant, at, you know, at a higher level than we currently do. And um, this would give us the flexibility to, to reach out to whoever didn't get back to us and you know, qualify for more of that grant money. Now it doesn't cover the cost of recycling, but it's kind of a subsidy that the state does offer. So I think we could do a better job and this would be a first step towards doing that. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so are there any questions or concerns on this ordinance from council members? Yeah, I have a question. So. Phillips, go ahead. Yeah, so you're asking to do away with the um, with the the date and people and just people just get the inf the, the report in when they can. Or are you setting a date? date usually the um, the date is something that we set. Okay. Right. Um, and it's usually like mid March. Okay. So okay. I think we need more time to get to get uh, to get in contact with business owners that haven't they're also required to, to have recycling okay the way okay. That we are so yeah. okay okay all right thank you you're welcome great any uh, councilman thank, thank thank you uh, madam president uh, i would like to um request that uh, since we changed the re resolution and also it's time to time we should uh, let our or educate our resident to know what exactly should put in the um, uh, recycling. Uh, many people forgetting, many people moving in, some people moving out. So if uh, township wide, we can um, refreshing the people that uh, what should go in the recycle bin, I think that will be uh, uh, um, good for us. I know that will also save save the money because when you have a mixed recycle, I believe the township get charged for that one. So I think the township and also the council is uh, is our responsibility to time to time to remind um, uh, our resident. 
Right. So the mayor's uh, address this evening was mostly on recycling. A lot of what she spoke about was on recycling and the education aspect and what goes in what the, and the comparison of contaminated versus uh, non-contaminated. So, yes, we're okay. all in agreement of the further we educate our residents, uh, the better job we're all going to do. Mm, yes. We're looking, we're going to be doing this much more frequently, consistently than we had have in the last year. So onward and upward. Okay, so should I, should I continue with the committee? Uh, 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 nope, we're not there yet. Councilman. Okay. Councilman Gwynn. You had it. You gotta unmute yourself. I know. So I get it got shut off again. Um, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Do you have? Does the township get a list of who the commercial uh, vendors are to be able to go after them? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Anyone else? I have a. I, I guess um, just out of curiosity and, and maybe somewhat uh, not exactly relevant to this item, but um, are, are we also impacted by non-residential commercial recycling, such as uh, like restaurants or uh, businesses? Or do they have an impact on this performance rating? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, commercial, the commercial recycling numbers come from the businesses in the community and also um, schools, the hospital, like it's sort of, there's residential and then like there's everything else is kind of lumped together. But this, this your question or what do you mean? No, it, it, um, yeah, it, it does. I, uh, yeah, no, that does answer my question, but this ordinance here is just impacting the date, the date, residential. Uh, no, this is for commercial. The date that they the the businesses have to get their paperwork back to us. Okay. This this gives us some flexibility, so that we can go back and follow up. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else have any questions? I did see Sadiq's hand for a second time, but I wanted to make sure everyone else had a chance to ask a question first. Okay. Seeing no one else, Councilman Sadiq. Uh, just to um, remind that uh, we township uh, should remind also that the uh, commercial uh, um, and uh, 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 non-commercial um, recycled things has to be, um, uh, their, their dumpster has to be locked down for safety reason. For so many people can be there. Just to remind the business owner that they have to secure their dumpster with the lock. So people cannot be some unnecessary uh, stuff to dump in there. Absolutely. It's definitely a, a property maintenance priority. No question. Okay, anyone else on um, ordinance 3091? Okay, not seeing anyone. Um, Solicitor Richardson, can you give us our if you haven't already given us our official first reading or however you wish to do it, I trust you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so. Ordinance of Upper Darby Township, Delaware County, Commonwealth, Pennsylvania, amending ordinance 2972 regarding the annual report due date for refuse and recyclables collected by commercial, commercial landlords and other applicable persons repealing all ordinance or parts thereof inconsistent herewith and providing a severability clause. Whereas on, uh, we'll skip to now therefore be it here, is hereby, hereby ordained by the Upper Darby Township Council and is hereby enacted and ordained by the authority of the same as follows. Section 7B of Ordinance 2972 is hereby admitted to state commercial landlords or persons or entities conducting community community activities that generate refuse must file on a form provided by the township an annual report that lists the type of the type and weight of refuse that has been collected during the preceding calendar year said report must be filed with the township by date determined by the administration 
Section 7C of Ordinance 2972 is hereby admitted to state commercial landlords or persons or entities conducting commercial act community activities that generate recyclables must pile file on a form provided by the township an annual report that lists the type and weight of recyclables that have been collected during the preceding calendar year. Said report must be filed with the township by a date determined by the administration effective immediately. Um, there is a, a repealer clause and adapted and ordained on the 27th of January, 2021. Okay, great. Uh, can we get a motion to uh, advertise ordinance number 3091? Uh, Councilman, so we'll Sadiq, Councilman Sadiq and a second? Uh, yeah, I'd like to second that. And Silva, do you have any questions or concerns on the advertisement of 3091? Should have asked it earlier. Um, Okay, Any so anything for 3091? Seeing none, uh, please turn your microphones on. All those in favor of advertising ordinance 3091, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say your name. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Um, Councilman Gwynn, you seem to have your hand yeah, up. I do have a, I do have a question relative to this. It's mute relative to this issue, but is there any penalty fee if they do not file on time? Or is that going to be covered in a different resolution? Mayor, did you want to address that? No, I think we'll, we'll, I think we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll try it this way for a cycle or two. I, I don't think anybody... Well, I'll have to talk to Sean and yeah. about that. Um, it's something that we would, might might want to consider in the future. But I just like what if we're at two percent with the return rate. I just you know I would like to get it up to seventy or eighty, and I would be really happy. A hundred percent return. I don't I don't know if anybody actually gets that done, but I'll I'll look into it. I'll look into it. So that's a good point, Bob. Great, thank you. Uh, so at this point in time, Councilman Sadiq, would you like to continue your report um, of yes. Municipal Services Committee? Did anyone in the committee have any uh, idea or issue uh, to bring it to the council? I see none. How about the yeah. other council members? Have any issue or any comments? I was just going to ask um, Sadiq, I mean, Councilman Sadiq, if we could uh, possibly meet sometime soon, because um, uh, we just have some things that I feel like we can all look at um, that we haven't really been gotten a chance to look at with COVID and everything. Okay, we're going to call a meeting, um, and then I, I'll let you know uh, the um, date and time, how we can meet it. That would be great. And if you guys need... Um... Uh, I can set up a meeting for you through Google Meet um, for a virtual venue of setting up the meeting. So just let sure, me know. Sure, I'm going to contact with you and let everyone to know. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So again, I think that's uh, concluded my report. Actually, I'm okay. sorry, excuse oh. me, Council President. Yep. Uh, I might have missed it. Did we need to roll call vote the introduction of the ordinance? No, this um, is for advertising. Just, uh, just for advertising, only for final adoption, as the charter says. Okay, sorry about yep. that. Yep. Sorry. Yes, because I think on a previous meeting, I still roll called advertisement because I was having a funky day. But it's not necessary. It so, doesn't hurt to roll call uh, advertisement, but it's not necessary. Okay. But there was no one saying their names for the no's. So if there had been, then I probably would have switched over if need be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, good catch on that though. Um, so we are okay. So, conclusion of municipal services, right? Yeah, that concludes the report. Okay, great. Uh, so next up, uh, we have the event planning committee co chairs Billups and Blackwell, and members Tunis Jr. and Silva. And I just like to thank them so much for all their hard work on. Resolution 0221, 
uh, if we can have a reading, uh, Solicitor Richardson. Okay. I'm just gonna pull it up. And thank you for all your hard work on it as well. Sure, no problem. Uh, this is resolution 0221, a resolution of Upper Darby Township, Delaware County, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in support of a peaceful and lawful transfer of power as described in the United States Constitution. Whereas Upper Darby Township is a diverse community that reflects social, various social economic backgrounds, nationalities, and ethnicities where over 70 different languages are spoken representing 60 different countries. Whereas many of the residents who immigrated to Upper Darby came to experience the opportunity and freedom that a stable, lawful government provides and free elections are the bedrock of our government. And these elections are how we determine the quote, consent of the governed. Whereas all Federal, state, and local elected officials take an oath to protect the laws of this country, to protect it from all enemies, both foreign and domestic, and to put the interests of the government where they, they serve above their own. Whereas Upper Darby Township Council believes that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness belongs to all people and will continue to defend people's rights to, right to exercise their freedom of speech as provided in the Bill of Rights. However, the council strongly condemns what took place at the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, January 6, 2021. Whereas the violent, seditious acts, which occurred on January 6, 2021, work against the will of the majority of the American people, the foundation of our government, and the very societal bindings of community itself, be it resolved that Upper Darby Township believes, that, believes the peaceful and lawful transfer of power is in the best interest of our residents, a nation and does hereby call upon all those elected and appointed officials in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as well as the United States who represent the residents of the Township of Upper Darby to publicly request the peaceful and lawful transfer of power as it is described in the United States Constitution. So ends the reading. Thank you. Uh, do council members uh, from the committee like to speak on this resolution? Uh, Councilman Tunis. Yeah, um, I think I would encourage uh, many of my council, uh, all of my colleagues on council um, to support this resolution. Some of the scenes we've seen uh, last Wednesday um, were some of the things that led uh, that my parents seen in war-torn Liberia in the 90s. And they fled um, a war-torn situation. And that's how those things kind of began with um, what many people got, many people wanted to protest and things, but things got a little violent on that end. So um Essentially, this resolution, in my eyes, is um, really um, just supporting um, democracy in America, as well as um, so, uh, supporting our law enforcement, the Capitol, as well as the D.C. Metropolitan Police, um, and as well as support as well as supporting our nation and our residents. We need people to come together. We're all officials here, and it would be great um, for the um, Township of Upper Darby if we will um, all support this um, together and let everyone know we're one up at Arby. And we can't control what happens outside of here. Um, but as on the township level, I think this is um, appropriate response. And I'm asking for all my colleagues um, to support this resolution. Thank you. Other council members? Councilman Gwynn? Yeah. Like everybody else, I was not very happy to see the events that transpired that day. Uh, I look at things to our own level here, and I know that there have been times that I've had disagreements with my Republican friends and they've had disagreements with me, but we always have been individuals that do things and try to work for the best of our communities as we see it. And we have to listen to each other and be responsive and they need to have this done in Washington as well. Um, I see Councilman Siddiq and Councilman Wagner. So Councilman Siddiq. Uh, really what happened on Wednesday, January, um, uh, January 6th is very um, shameful for as a, as a nation. And also um, I born in, in Bangladesh by third world country, all the corrupt government dictator, 
there's a killing and uh, and protest and, and 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 damaging all these things but my children they born all three of them born over here and when they saw this thing then sometime i explained them what happened in in third world country and they asked me question that uh, how come in this country and america have such a, uh, a terrible thing happen in here so i just want to share that what happened as a nation, we condemn this one and we will work together to keep our democracy safe and sound. Okay, Councilman Wagner. Thank you. Uh, I heard my friend Bob Quinn just reference both Republicans and Democrats and uh, I appreciate that, Bob, I really do. Because um, I'd like you to know and I'd like to be on record as saying I was extremely dismayed at all the things that happened in Washington. And I agree with everything that's said in this resolution. I intend to vote for it, support it. Um, I, I will tell you that I would feel even better about it if it equally condemned all the violence and looting and burning that occurred without, re, without redress um, throughout the summer. And failing to condemn all of that, as well as what happened in Washington, carries the danger of making this resolution look partisan. But um, I'm willing to assume that it's not partisan and uh, therefore uh, I support it. Um, and I'm gonna vote for it just as much as Bob Gwynn and um, um, uh, Sheikh Sadiq and um, everyone else who's spoken or not um, in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Silva. Yeah. Um uh, I'd like to, to thank everybody. Uh, well, when the, the committee was kind of, uh, this kind of was brought to our attention, uh, I, it, it was, uh, it was kind of an arduous process, but it was something that we all worked on together. Uh, there was a lot of time we weren't sure we would be able to put something together. So I do apologize to, to Mr. Wagner that we couldn't really, uh, address those other grievances as well, but we, uh, we, we wanted to resolve for something. And I think the resolve that we were looking for, uh, we wanted it to be positive. We, we didn't want it to be negative and we certainly didn't want to add, add fuel to already what we feel like is a widening division uh, nationally and, and here. Uh, I, I, so when it kind of came to our attention that what we, what we aren't seeing or what we would like to see very much is the peaceful and lawful transition of power. Um, that, that, I mean, that, that's wholly factual. And then, and I, I was a little inspired to, uh, by something that uh, Councilman Tuna said uh, over the summer, uh, where uh, when, when we were talking about the protest, uh, uh, the, the Black Lives Matter protest, it, it, and it's, it's not that we, there's there's certain things that we're not trying. There, there's certain things that are, are like that that you sure divide us. There's issues that we have different opinions on, but there's some things that we can all agree on, and 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 I think that like I mean, and I wanted this resolution to to be something that we remember that we we all do agree. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Wagner, I, I I had you in mind very much when when we were putting this together because I I I, I do hope that today that we can all agree that this is needed and this is something that will help all of us. So I, I appreciate that your, your willingness to vote for this. So thank yeah. you. If I may, um, um, President, do I have the floor or not? Uh, can, are you bouncing off of what Councilman Silva just said? Yeah, but I was waiting for you to recognize me. Or... Okay. Because technically you've already spoken. Yeah. Can I continue the rounds and come back to you? Okay. okay yes. Thank you, sorry. Uh, Councilwoman Billups. Thank you, Council President Wentz. So um, I just want to say that um, the committee worked hard on this resolution. And like my colleague said, um, it, there was a time that um, I, I personally did not want to write it um, because um, because I thought that it was going to cause more division. And um, so 
I had to think about the the positive aspects of our country because um because at the end of the day you know we're all human beings and and things happen and and it was hurtful what happened um on um on january 6th you know i i know i personally was was grieved by to see it and um because um it was just disheartening because i think at the end of the day for me this 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 ordinance is um it is positive resolution. we condemned it and um this resolution i'm sorry it is positive and we condemned what happened and we condemned everything that, that happened over the summer as well. And, and um, Mr. Uh, uh, Councilman Wagner, you know, uh, again, you know, we couldn't con put everything in there, um, but we, we condemned the actions over the summer as well. Um, but I think now is the time for reconciliation of, of, of our people, both um, of all of our people, you know, both Democrats and Republicans, you know, um, so you know, it, it is time for for healing, so to speak. So, and I hope everyone um, um, is on board with this resolution. Thank you. Okay, and then any other council members that haven't already spoken that would like to speak, Councilwoman Blackwell, do you go ahead? You're unmuted. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is not a notion. We have to support our constitution. We are all human beings. We have feelings. We have emotions. We all make mistakes. There is only perhaps, I don't know, and there's only one person, if that is, that's perfect. So we want to heal our country. We want to work together with everyone. We want to make this world better for everybody. That's just... What, what we strive to do. How we get it done is up to us to figure it out. This is our planet. This is our world. We are the people for the people. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council members wanting to speak? I have Councilman Tunis on. Uh... Okay, seeing no one else, Councilman Tunis. Yeah, um, I just want to echo a lot of the things that was said prior. Um, I really just also, I feel like since I've been a part of this council, we've been really addressing um, things that have been happening. Um, the community day healing, when we teamed up with Upper Darby School District, as well as the Upper Darby Police Department um, to have those voices. When um, my friend from the third was who also um, toured 69th Street with us, um, with law enforcement, as well as many members of council. And um, Mayor Keffer denounced that looting was not acceptable. Um, I think at that time, those are the things that we could do then. Um, now, this is the resolution that we think we can bring forward. Uh, I, I'm happy that, I'm happy to hear that Republicans and Democrats can agree on things because there's this notion that that doesn't, that doesn't happen. We've had a track record on this council of voting on things um, unanimously numerous times. Um, so if it, it may not be feasible in Washington, but I, I'll let people know that it's feasible in Upper Abbey Township. Definitely. Definitely. Great. Let us set the example. Yeah, good point. Okay, great. Anyone else? All right. Uh, Councilman Wagner. Wait, um, I call Councilman, Councilman Wagner first. Sorry, go ahead, Councilman Wagner. All I have is a suggestion. Um, I know this is a resolution, not an ordinance, but because of its important subject matter, I suggest a roll call vote on it. Okay. Yep. Um, thank you. So can we get a motion to approve resolution 0221? I'd like to make a motion. Second it. Quinn and Sadiq. Okay. And uh, Ms. Phillips, can you give us a roll call vote on resolution 0221? Yes. Council Councilor Tunis? Uh, yes. Councilor Billows is a yes. Councilor Silva? Yes. Councilor Blackwell? Yes. Councilor Gwynn? Yes. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Sadiq? Yes. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Councilor Feralia? Yes. Councilor Barnett? Yes. 
Councilor Wagner? Yes. And Council President Wentz? Yes. Thank you all <clears throat> for your support of this resolution. Great job. Okay, so thank you everyone. You guys just did a, an amazing job. We appreciate it. Um, at this point in time, um, uh, Ms. Councillor Billups, would you like to finish your events committee report? Yes. Um, does anyone from the committee have anything else to, to, to report? Yes, Councillor Silver. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh... I was wondering if, if you wanted to to uh, discuss what we were planning for the month of February. Oh, yes, yes. So February, as everyone is aware, is um, uh, Black History Month. We will be um, celebrating African-American women. Um, we're doing women who are local and also um, women who are um, not so local <laughs> and um, famous women. And um, we're gonna be um, doing like a, um, a video, a biography of these women and um, every day of the month of February. And it's gonna be on our page. So it's gonna be something virtual. So um, we're, we're gonna be meeting and that's gonna be our assignment and we should have it up on February 1st. Awesome. Great, thank you. Um, Councilman Gwynn, are you having a question? I'm sorry, I, I'm not. I'll wait till it's opened up to the council. Okay. Anybody else from council have anything? Anybody from council? Yes, just, council. Just yes. have a quick question. I know in the past uh, we had solicited and received a resident. Um, poems or some other literature from the schools uh, relative to the black history uh, or a specific topic that they were supposed to do and we would view it and uh, award some prizes to it. Will we be doing anything of similar nature this year? I know, uh, I know Dr. Cole uh, that was her project right? Yes, and I, th I think that she would start the process in the fall of the year before, mm -hmm. as far as making sure the that the, right, working with the yeah. teachers and so forth. So I think that's saying that we would have to look to do um, next fall yeah. in preparation <laughs> for 2022 so that we have it ready to rock and roll. Yeah. 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 Because they would, be get, they would be collecting the uh, poems in February to be able to, or end of February, to, or sorry, end of January, in order to be able to go through the reading of them and, and, and getting the committee to judge them. So and It's all virtual now anyway. That's the yeah. other thing. Right. So we haven't started, we haven't done anything to do that. So that's definitely something to be worked on for 2022. 2022. Yeah. Ms. Blackwell, you had something? No, I just was going to suggest that maybe we should um, consult with her to see if there's anything that we can do now, um, between now and February, because we still have time before 2022. That's all. Maybe okay. it can be still implemented because the ball is still rolling, because it also would help the children to give them some motivation to include them and to so, continue to, to tradition as what has been done in the past. Yeah. Okay. So you guys will reach out to Dr. Coles. Yeah, we can do yes, that. Yes, Madam President. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Is there, uh, you're muted. There you go. All right. Um, so anyone else from council have anything? Seeing none, that concludes our report. Great, thank you. Uh, so next up is Law and Government Rules and Rules and Procedures Committee, co-chairs 
Phillips and Silva, members Sadiq and Blackwell. Take it away. Um, anyone from law and government and rules and procedure committee have anything to report? Yes, Councilor Sadiq. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if it in that uh, category that um, for uh, Upper Derby Township is way bigger and larger than many city in Pennsylvania as well as in America. So I would like to propose that uh, city of up, uh, 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 city of Upper Derby instead of Upper Derby Township because we are surplus. Anyway, again, if it if it in this committee or some other committee, I am proposing that that Upper Derby Township should be city of Upper Derby because we are way bigger than many many cities, population wise and um, area wise, and uh, multicultural and multi diversity. So that's my proposal, and I don't know if mayor can say anything or it can which. I believe there are certain regulations or certain aspects that you have to have in place for that to happen, but I'm sure Mayor Keffer can weigh in on that one. Well, Mr. Kilkenny. Well, um, in order, actually, I think we would have to work through Harrisburg to get a special designation for Upper Darby. The reason that we're not considered a city beast, um, despite our size, is that uh, we have one area which I call Upper Darby Island. It's it's the two one. It's not yeah. any other part of the township. So because the township isn't contiguous, we cannot be considered a city. So it, it's something to think about um, because I think I think we would qualify possibly for more you know grant aid and different considerations. So it's something we should we should we should think about. In a, which city? Yeah, said that. Um, we're, I mean, we're right next door to Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is always going to overshadow us just because they're ten times as big as we are. But um, I, I see Cao Ronchio. Anyone else? Yep. As well. Go ahead, Cao. Uh, absolutely no. Uh, uh, you're right, Mayor, and and a lot of good good points, Councilman Sadiq. The it would require action both at the local level with regard to the Home Rule Charter and also action in Harrisburg um, uh, from, uh, from the state government in order to make that change. And there would be some other procedural things like the mayor was mentioning about the township being contiguous. So um, it, it absolutely, I do think is something that's worth looking into because as, as the mayor says, there are real practical implications with regard to monies that we would be able to get to support the township. And in terms of our profile, I mean, thinking back to what I was saying about grant money from the Department of Community and Natural Resources, just raising the profile of Upper Darby. I mean, um, so I, I do think there's value there. And I think it's a conversation that we would have to have with the residents uh, that would, would take a lot of time and be multifaceted, but it's an interesting conversation to begin uh, for sure. And so oh, well, the other thing is, we were organized as a township originally, right? And so when the Home Rule Charter was written, they had to select a document for us to um, fundamentally rely on. So if the Home Rule Charter doesn't address an issue, we default to the first class township code. Uh, so one of the changes that would have to be made is our default document would have to be the third class city code. And <clears throat> uh, the, the thing there is, even though we're referred to as Upper Darby Township and, and we call ourselves Upper Darby Township, the reality is that since the passage of the Home Rule Charter, uh, Upper Darby has been a home rule community. In, in, a, in a very technical sense, uh, we actually are Upper Darby, a home rule community, um, and Upper Darby Township is kind of a, a, a colloquial uh, remembrance that, that predates the Home Rule Charter. Uh, we are a, a home rule municipality, not uh, not a first class township in the same way that a place that's governed by the first class township code would be. One of the one of the important issue I would like to mention really, this is a diverse community and health is a fundamental issue for our community. 
And if we are a city, then we can have the free health treatment as a city of Philadelphia having. So uh, let's think about it and let's work on it. And then, uh, you know, the mainly that we can improve our uh, life of our uh, residents in if we become a city. And a lot of facility we can get it from the state. And with that, I am happy to work with any committee, subcommittee, and with the township to make it happen. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. So, uh, Ms. Phillips? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sadiq. Um, anyone else from the committee has anything else? Anyone from Council? Seeing none, that concludes our report. Great. So next up, we have a solicitor report. You have to unmute yourself. Yep. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, our, our office has uh, been busy moving out uh, from the budget at the end of the, the last year to the vacant property ordinance, uh, the recycling ordinance and several other pieces of legislation that are in the queue. Uh, the mayor has given us uh, a priority list uh, to start working on on, um, on a monthly basis and trying to forward more ordinances uh, for council to consider besides everyday operations where we um, uh, answer questions from the CAO, the mayor, uh, and members of staff uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Uh, myself and uh, Ms. Richardson and uh, Mr. Wolko from my office are continually engaged with Upper Darby matters. Great, thank you. Uh, and then next up we have old business. Does anyone have any old business to bring to council? Councilman Burke. Yeah, can we get an update on uh, Lynn Boulevard? Council, um, CAO, are you able to give us an update on Lynn Boulevard? We were last we heard it was the construction was going to be done by the end of December, but I think it's still going. Um, I apologize. I do not have an update on Lynn Boulevard uh, prepared, but I absolutely can look into it uh, and get back to you before the end of the week. Awesome. Thank you. Thank uh, you. OK, anyone else with the old business? OK, seeing none. New business? I do. Uh, Ms. Phillips, go ahead. This is a personal thing. Monday's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 22. Capricorns. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good thing to celebrate. Anyone else have something for, uh, for new business? Uh, I just, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Council President, I just want to say on on behalf of uh, my other uh, fellow members on the events committee, I, I just want to thank everybody for uh, voting yes on Resolution 221. Uh, it, it just, um, I, I, that was like, you know, that's what I was hoping that that we could all do that, and I'm, I'm glad everyone agreed and did that. So I just want to uh, offer my appreciation. Great, thank you. And um, Councilman Sadiq? Just uh, uh, on January 20th, uh, you know, inauguration day, do we have any precaution or any safety issue or what township we are taking if, if in case anything happened, anything? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, Superintendent Bernhardt has been attending local and regional meetings uh, and receiving briefings from state and national law enforcement agencies. And I've been uh, coordinating with him uh, on those matters. So we're, we're tracking closely uh, that information and social media activity to try to determine, we, you know, right now the thought is that, that state and federal capitals um, are, are more likely, not that obviously we hope that everything is peaceful everywhere, um, but it is something that we're aware of and tracking on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Yep. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone else for new business? All right, 
So we have one last motion. It's a motion to adjourn. Can we get a motion to adjourn? I'd like to make so a move. motion to adjourn. Uh, so Sadiq and Gwen. Uh, all those in favor, please sing that uh, by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Say your name. Eyes have it. We are adjourning at 9.30 p.m. Great job tonight, guys. You are amazing.